There you go. Ne, ne, I budi laska. <laughs> Dakle. I budi laska, komu treba preklad, to navučnike ovaj stan. And please make sure that you will have the headphones for the interpretation. It's not your slide uh, yet. Just a second. for the um, invitation to be here in Kiev. Uh, it's a very uh, special moment because last two years we are working very hard with UNUN. I'm part of UNUN. UN is a, a cooperation between um, uh, Dutch and Ukraine uh, uh, spatial um, professionals. By the way, I want to, I'm from Orange Architects. I have two hats at the moment, Orange Architects and also a board member of uh, UNUN. Uh, our office is based, by the way, not in Amsterdam, but in Rotterdam, a small uh, change in this information for Dutch, very important because we're not that big. Um, so I will start. Um, I have a little bit of different topics in, the, in my presentation. I will go first, uh, tell a little bit about UNUN, go a little bit through it with a kind of speed. Then I want to tell you something about very boring stuff, but very important stuff. There's the AU taxonomy, it's the European legislation for sustainability. Then we have our orange mission, it's a very sustainable mission. Uh, two years ago, we invented it uh, for our office to deal with the too big word, too big container word sustainability, how we approach it in our projects. And I will show you and with two nice, beautiful projects we made with the office. And it's more about how you can deal with sustainability, sustainability in the widest sense of the world, uh, word. UN, UN, two years ago, founded by Oleksandr Tkashenko um, in Rotterdam with a lot of other ambitious, very motivated Ukraine uh, professionals um, started thinking about the rebuilding of uh, Ukraine from the Netherlands. Uh, because they were not able to go back anymore to Ukraine. So at the moment, we have now a board and a supervisory board. There's also a former ambassador of the Netherlands is in it. So we have Elena Shevchenko, Pavlo Khodorkovsky, and me. And what are we doing? We have three main things. One of them is networking. So connecting a lot of people, professionals, uh, but also people from the government, um, for the rebuilding process. So we don't produce with UNUN. We only want to connect people and we think about things, uh, what could be interesting. So we have visits, events. We work together with a lot of or Dutch organizations in the Netherlands, also with the Collegium van Rijksadviseurs, is a Dutch governmental organization for advisors, uh, but also um, cultural uh, organizations. We also... Because we are professionals ourselves, we also have a think tank, our own think tank, uh, and we come up with sometimes with ideas um, what are very important for the rebuilding process. One of them is, of course, AU taxonomy. I will, I will tell you a little bit later on it. The other one was uh, thinking about neighborhoods. I also have experience, um, and also my colleagues in uh, Ukraine uh, on the eastern um, modernistic city uh, with a vast amount of uh, post-war uh, neighborhoods and the thing is that before, uh, so they don't have that much quality before the 1940s, because before the World War II, there was a lot of quality in the older cities. And we want to see why is this quality not back again? And if you zoom in, you can see that the missing link here is the neighborhood. There's no, also no real word for it in Ukrainian at the moment. And we are thinking if you use the neighborhood as a strategy, yeah, so if you can use it from bottom up, you can use it also for top down, you can use it for a lot of uh, sustainable uh, solutions, mobility, uh, but you also can have it for participation. It's the biggest size people still can comprehend, uh, but it's also big enough for uh, governments to, uh, to help. The other one is uh, capacity, capacity building. We do it with education, with the universities, also combining with uh, uh, Ukraine. Uh, this is a workshop for Novoselivska, uh, what we did uh, two months ago in the Breda University. Uh, and we also have other events, online events with uh, VNG International. It's a Dutch uh, uh, organization for municipalities to share information. We have office visits, also mayors coming sometimes once in a while to Rotterdam. 
And the main one we are working on now is Panorama Ukraine. We have uh, multiple topics we are working on at the moment. We had one in uh, the water hackathon was in uh, last November. There will be one about neighborhoods upcoming uh, May, June. And then we have all the other topics will be later on. We organize not alone, but with also a lot of other organizations. Now, the second topic I want to talk to you about is the AU taxonomy. It's a very, again, a very boring topic. It's a very difficult topic, but on the other hand, very simple topic. Uh, and I want you to take to with you also why, uh, why uh, the AU taxonomy is relevant, because we have a climate crisis because of the Besides the war crisis you have at the moment, there's also a climate crisis, a very important one. And you also, with the rebuilding, you're rebuilding the future. So you have to think about also the sustainable adventures. Now, why? Because we are with too many people in this world. We consume too much. We use too much energy. It's getting back in the, in the, in the Earth system. That's generating, of course, a lot of bad things. Uh, I think you heard about it. There's also the, the flooding in Europe. Uh, we have the, f the forest uh, fire also in Rodos last year. Paris 2015, there was a very important one worldwide. We had agreement with uh, a lot of governments. Uh, the next one was that the European Union uh, went further with it. Uh, the European Green Deal is also a part of it. So it was also part of this organization where we're standing here tonight, uh, today. And from that, the EU taxonomy uh, was invented by the European Union is to measure sustainability. So it's nothing else than a sustainability label. So that's the upper one. I'm not going to read it for you. It's too long, very complex, but it's it's a very it's a sustainability label because you want to compare all the sustainable interventions with all the projects at the same way. And how do they measure it at the moment? So they measure it on biodiversity pollution, circular economy, water and climate adaptation, and you can have a high values or low values in it. But these are important. Why are these important? Because they will affect, now, in short, they will affect also the financial market. It affects your uh, financial possibilities for developing large scale projects. And my focus is on spatial, so on buildings, on urban areas. Um, shareholders and investors are vast this because at the moment you don't, uh, uh, in Europe you had only the financial accountancy at the end of the year, but now they also are obliged to have sustainable accountancy at the end of the year. So it's, it's, it's a little bit weird. Maybe a lot of people you don't know, but now you have to have two reports at the end of the year. You don't have to be sustainable. You have to show what you do on sustainability. The next one is that big organizations, not the small ones, the big organizations, they are obliged also to have one uh, sustainable accountant report at the end of the year. But you see already the effect when you have sustainable interventions, if you have sustainability, um, uh, high values in your portfolio, your, your project will be worth more. And who must report? So we have the uh, AU finances for the real estate, mortgage lenders, it's very important because now at the moment, even private persons experience this when they ask for a mortgage because the mortgage lender is already saying, okay, uh, but what about your house? How much is it isolated, et cetera? You have the sustainability label for your house from A to G, et cetera. Uh, if, there are, if your house is not sustainable, your mortgage is lower what you can lend at the moment. So it's already affecting private persons. And why is it relevant for Ukraine? Because you're, you're, you have to, you're already rebuilding, but you will be rebuilding way more. And it takes such an amount of money. Uh, you also want to connect to the European Union. So anyhow, therefore, it's very good that you learn a little bit about the European sustainability law because they are laws and you have to comply to, with them if you want to connect to the European Union, if you want to connect to the European financial markets. But why sustainable? Because also I had experience when uh, talking with uh, architects, professionals. Yeah, it's not that relevant because they say, yeah, we don't have the money, etc. But basically, there are main three reasons why to do it on the uh, moral side also. But the lowest part is maybe interesting uh, to see this also uh, financially very interesting. 
So you have to connect the European and also US markets. They demand sustainable interventions. They, they, they demand sustainable plans. EU taxonomy is a European binding. It's a law. Um, and uh, assets are already rated higher. The last one, the project owners, I will show at the last page. It's a very high rated uh, sustainable project. It's an article nine, and I'm not gonna explain you where the article numbers are coming from. This is the highest number on sustainability. What you can have if a financer wants to uh, uh, buy, an, and if this investor wants to buy an, uh, a project. So it's, it's worth money. Keep that in mind and explain also big investors uh, that they have a look on the EU taxonomy. And I think with uh, the, the rebuilding uh, project you have in front of you. There are also very uh, big uh, chances to be innovative. You already have this on IT uh, at the moment, but you could also be this on uh, on uh, sustainability and on, on all these solutions that are there uh, in front of you. I also want to help you because it's a very big uh, thing, sustainability. We are also struggling with it in our office because then we get something about energy, then something about isolation, then something about biodiversity, then something about social living together. But how did, how did we have to combine this? How I had to read this? So then we came up with this sustainability tool. It's our mission also. World we value. It's very simple. You can also remember it very easy. World. It's about resources, it's about energy, it's about materials, it's about nature. We is how you live together, mentally, uh, physically, um, and also uh, together. And the last one is about economy, the context, because if you build a project, it has got influence on the context. Uh, and it's also about community. And community is meant here, that you connect with the people uh, around your building and in the city fabric. So it's a very, uh, for us, a very compre a comprehensive uh, a tool that we use for all our projects. We work more on it. So we have each team is divided into three sub teams and then also again, divided into three sub teams. If you have this, you can have a kind of sustainability checklist. What we do with all our projects, we're gonna see if, so we start with ambition, and then further on, on the sketch design phase, the definite design phase, uh, the technical design phase, it becomes a promise. So from ambition for each phase, it goes further and further to, um, to a realistic overview on the, all the sustainability measures we do. It's very difficult because we don't always have sustainability measures everywhere. We also have to fight on it, even in the Dutch market. But it helps us. Uh, to see how sustainable our projects are. It helps us also to fight for it. Uh, and it also helps clients to see what we do already with no extra money, because every time it's always about money, but it's not always about money. Sometimes it's about a different choice. And I want to tell how we did this in two projects. Uh, one is Zoho, the other one is Jonas. Zoho is in a, a an existing neighborhood in the north of Rotterdam. You see the uh, station uh, there. You have the, the the main roundabout where we have when Feyenoord the football competition wins. There's a big party always in this fountain. And uh, a little bit on the north side, it's on the edge of the city center. Uh, there's a neighborhood uh, when the Germans bombed uh, Rotterdam. Uh, this part was demolished, and it was rebuilt with a modernistic style, but also with uh, industry small kind of industry inside the city. And then it uh, went up, went down, went up, went up. And then we had the uh, Zoho community. Uh, it's a revival um, of this area. So a lot of artists, architects uh, rediscovered the area, painted the buildings uh, with a nice uh, dazzle painting. They have a small, nice cafes inside. It's very nice, but it's very small scale. And what you also see is that, uh, and I think uh, in Holland, it's way more than you have here because we don't have that much space in, in the Netherlands. We have uh, 20 million people on a very small island of very small land. We have to densify. And we say, if we densify, that's okay. But if we densify, then there should be a lot of amenities also with it. 
that you live very nice. The apartment, the average apartment size in the Netherlands is going down from 100 per person. Huh? So 100 square, uh, from 60 square meters to, I think, around uh, 30, 34. And we have now, let's say 10 years ago, we made apartments. Average apartment size was like 80 to 100 square meters. Now it's like 50 to 70 square meters. You see already that it's dropping because we don't have the space anymore. We say that's fine, but then make very nice neighborhoods, buildings, and that with a lot of extra uh, amenities with it. So you see the location. We have a high line, existing high line. It's not functioning anymore for a lot of years. There's a roof park, Zus, uh, an urban uh, office in Rotterdam made the yellow bridge to connect uh, all the areas. So they made with new connections that the area was more uh, accessible. And there's a green canal. It's called a single in Dutch. Um, and with our area, we want to connect the High Line because the High Line will be a lifted park, like just like in New York, uh, with the small or the low scale from the north, the city, the, the single. And by connecting them, it's it's going to be a kind of a hub, urban hub uh, for the both green zones, but also for people to go up and also to uh, to come together in this area. So that's why we came up with this concept. It's a very simple concept: three layers. The one, the lab is the current layer of all these activities of architects, uh, um, uh, maker district. Then we got up the, the land. It's a, it's a combination of uh, what was Rotterdam before. It was a swamp area, uh, but also an area before the war where we just has the brick houses. And then on top of it, uh, a, two big towers, a lot of uh, main volumes with uh, housing. And then we explain a little bit further. So the lab layer with all this um, yeah, urban uh, activities, um, village-like living on, on a high level, and then uh, apartment buildings on top of it. And also because it was not a very expensive neighborhood, it, was a, it is a bad, in the current, at the current state, is a bad neighborhood. Also the average income is very low, a lot of social housing, a very mix of uh, different nationalities. So it's a very, how, how do you say it, uh, friendly, it's a kind of a, a sensitive uh, area. So we want to use this also uh, for the identity of the, of the, of the new uh, project because 70,000 square meters was put in this new development. So we want, also don't want it to have it like a very chic uh, um, uh, area because that wasn't the identity of the area at the moment and also not the, uh, what we think it could be in the future. So this was the main model we made for the, for the competition that we won. We all also had uh, uh, three awards uh, for it. And one part of it, because you see the whole area is a small street, but uh, it's a, in a big area we did with uh, three architects and the main uh, um, Part of it, Kavel uh, number one, was uh, designed by uh, Orange, by us. And I will take you through the three layers, uh, how we designed it, how we, how we foresee it. it. And uh, back again to the sustainability is because we want to connect also with the neighborhood. We want to connect with the context, but we also want to enrich the context with new program, existing program, keep the makers also in. Huh? So we have also participation process uh, to see how this um, feeling of this neighborhood also could be in the future development. Uh, so around the building, we have a small the housing. There's a small uh, double duplex housing, but the rest is uh, a cafe and living room for the neighborhood. There's a super, supermarket, makers' uh, uh, ateliers, uh, and a coffee corner. But in the middle, there's a, a mobility hub. In the Netherlands, uh, we want to have less cars per inhabitant, less cars per household. So for this one, it's also very uh, a new uh, kind of way of developing is that the, if you buy a, an apartment there, you can't have a parking space. So you buy an apartment and you know that you can't have a car. You can rent a car because there's a mobility hub. You can rent a bike, you can rent a car, but you can't put your car there. Not completely true because there are 20 spaces uh, to uh, to sell. 
So the mobility hub serves therefore as also as a social connector because uh, at the end of the day, the beginning of the day, people will park their car or take their car. So they will go to the hub, meet people, uh, have their groceries in the supermarket or pass by the living room. So we wanted to have a kind of a city in city concept. And here you can see also the, the stacking of the, of the different volumes. The blue and white is the existing building, uh, but because of the uh, way too big masses uh, on the plot, it was not able to, uh, re to, get, to hold all the structure because there's a lot of new structure also inside. We dismantle all the blue and white uh, uh, concrete uh, slabs from the facade and put it exactly on the same spot back again. We did a, a study on the current uh, architecture of the modernistic style uh, for, uh, in the 50s. Uh, and that's also how we build up the new facade with, uh, with the same kind of uh, principles, but with a new translation. Uh, you can also see uh, here we have the, the living room. Uh, we have to enter for, for the mobility hub. Uh, these here, uh, also installation space. We open it up the insulation space and we have graffiti in it and you can see the insulation. So we want to have a lively plant. So if you walk past by it, it's never a dead plant. And in Holland, uh, we more or less succeed with this, but you see also because we use our urban space, urban space is also for us also very important because it connects the whole city fabric and therefore you need also activated plants. Here's the mobility hub next to is the, the neighborhood living room. Uh, Haley is a kind of a, a mobility uh, a kind of service that you can rent bikes and there's office space next to it and above it, you also see housing in the plinth. And this is how it could look like. Uh, supermarket on the left, so this uh, on the other side corner, we have a cafe on the right, terraces outside, housing on top of it and also the, the housing on the next uh, layer. And when you go inside, so the lobby of the, of the towers, they're also connected with an inner street. So the zebra the, it starts here, goes directly through the mobility hub to the other uh, entrance of the other tower. And we also have a uh, perpendicular on another inner street. So also this, the inside also serves as outside space, as uh, public space. Now, if you go to the next layer, the land layer, this was our uh, idea how we wanted to have it in the competition. We're now, uh, the, whole, the permit is now already final there because we have one protester in the vicinity because of the shade, it's but part of participation. You can hold up the whole project. We think it's uh, uh, continuing, but it will be upon next year. And we wanted to have the, the vegetation to what was there before, and this is called Heimtuin. So and the vegetation that is growing by nature, by natural already on the spot. We have uh, a park on, uh, on around eight to 10 meters high. There's a soil package uh, of 80 centimeters to have even uh, small trees in it. We have water retainment uh, below it that the, the vegetation gets the water directly uh, uh, from the roof. And the roof is also publicly accessible. And you see the whole system of the water. So you saw it also back again in my story on sustainability. We have the social part explained, but also on the, on the water level. Yeah? So the, on the resources, we collect the water on the high roofs, bring it to the lower roof, retain it there. Uh, and there's a smart system when, a, uh, so there's a water level, but if there will be a, a vast amount of new rain, then the, all the, um, the pipes open up and they release the water so they can hold the new water from the new uh, rain again. So it's a very smart uh, system to retain water, to not push all the water back in the sewage system. And also to have the possibility that you have this kind of landscape on, a, on eight to 10 meters high. And if you live here, yeah, you have a super different uh, way of uh, housing climate than, uh, than you live on the ground floor or you live in the tower. So you have also different types of uh, housing within a block. And then when you go to the next levels, the towers, we made two distinctions. There's a one is a rental tower, the other one, the left one is a rental tower. The right one is in a sales tower with sales apartments. 
in order to make this kind of projects also feasible, we made it very efficient to the same kind of uh, layout of the towers. We made the inclination to get the sun better in because they are too close to each other otherwise. Also to get the sun in the, in the middle street and you have uh, in this case, uh, nine, um, eight apartments uh, per floor. And this is the heart of the whole area. So we have a green zone, we have stairs from here, from the, from the ground level, you can go up the stairs or uh, to the linear uh, roof that's going through the city, or you can go to our block uh, to the lifted landscape. So during the day, it's also publicly accessible. And then again, uh, after each project or during the project, we also, for each phase, we have the sustainability report for ourselves to the client. But we think also, back again to the taxonomy, that all the clients, the big clients we have, we also have to prove, because there's a whole production line, because of the developer and the architects, all the advisors, they also have to prove that they are working sustainable. So we also have this kind of a sustainable administration, what we do now at the moment. It's not 100% uh, EU uh, taxonomy compliable. Uh, the topics we have are way more than the EU taxonomy because the EU taxonomy is more focusing on the world, it's the nature and the resources. We, we, we want to be ahead of things. So this, in the end, uh, if you arrive from the city center, so this is more or less the climate we have connected with, uh, with the High Line, also with uh, the Maker Splint, Coffee Corner, Supermarket. No. The last project I want to show you is uh, Jonas. Jonas is uh, situated in Amsterdam. Eiburg is an, a new island made in the IJsselmeer um, uh, in, in the Netherlands. Yeah, what we do, we make new land. And because we don't have land, we make new land all the time. This is done in the 90s. Um, everything you see is from 1990s until now. And there's already now building a new island, two new islands on this side. And this plot was until 19 of 2020, it was not built. And there was a competition by the municipality of Amsterdam uh, for um, a sustainable project, iconic project, sustainable project, but could, what could enhance the harbor. Um, and also, um, yeah, before it was just grassland, that could also host uh, younger people from the neighborhoods that they still could play there because their whole grassland was uh, vanished. So that, and also the, the municipality said that they wanted to have 25,000 square meters there. So it's a very big project on a small island. And we thought about how could you do this? Eh? Uh, one of the main things what we did, and also you saw it also in the, in the ZOA project, we have a concept, very strong concept, storytelling also with our projects. And this one was how this is more about the construction of, um, of the building. We also wanted to use this typology of this, this, this uh, spans, uh, this constructions uh, linear, uh, like a boat. It's also in, in the Jonas project. I will tell you a, li a little bit later on on it. And it was also awarded with a lot of prizes. Um, the, the, for us, the, the, the important, most important one was the uh, being our best building uh, award of uh, the year 2023, but also the uh, the award by the municipality of uh, Amsterdam, uh, Zuiderkerkprijs. Uh, it helping us a lot also to showcast all our sustainable ideas we have that you can make high density buildings with really nice living in. And they have a lot of special uh, amenities. They have a lot of special functions also, what I will uh, tell you about. So one of the things we started with is uh, participation. Just go into the neighborhood, invite people, talk about, not with a question, uh, what do you want kind of building here, but ask how do you foresee that the whole area could work? Uh, what are you missing in your neighborhoods? So don't ask if, what, if you want to have the building a brick or in wood. It's not a relevant question for the participation, but it's more about for people how they would want their neighborhood to work. So with all the ideas that came out of it, we took into uh, our design. And one of it is that they say, yeah, we don't want to have a very big building that is just standing there and doing nothing. 
for us, it was also a very important one that we made this very big building of 25,000 square meters. That even though it was a very big building or it is a very big building, it's a very cozy building. So it's very nice to live in because it feels very warm. It feels even small on uh, some parts. So we use also the story of this one, uh, Gepetto with the uh, Pinocchio story, of course, how they lived in a, in a big wheel. That's where the name Jonas came, also came from. And we didn't start with the building itself. We started with a scheme of, of areas or spots uh, in the building. Uh, how do you want to live during the day? Um, and then we said, yeah, one of the main things we wanted to make here was an, a, a living room, but also a square play where you could play. You have the water because uh, a lot of water around it also, uh, a forest and a roof garden. And all these functions, as it was in the competition, and we also uh, could keep it during the design process uh, until the realization. Underground, we have uh, 90 parking spots. Uh, there are 270 apartments inside the building, so not everyone has a park uh, has a uh, parking space. So you buy or you rent a space, and you don't have a parking because it. The tram is uh, nearby, public transport is nearby, so you need, don't need a car. So even the legislation, legislation in the Netherlands is that we go sometimes less. Yeah? So we have 0.2 uh, per apartment in a lot of new uh, project developments. Parking underneath the ground. Um, we have uh, a main, uh, our main square with the entrance of the parking. It's, um, we call it the rock. And we have a wooden inner world a forest patio, uh, and then the main volume wrapping around it. And because the, the island before was this publicly accessible grass field where, where kids were playing, we also thought it would be nice if we make a building there, but programmatically, programmatically we lift it up and uh, the ground floor is during the day publicly accessible. So we have the square with the rock, what I told you before. And then we have also commercial program office spaces that is during the day. They have the doors also open. We have a, a, a main corridor in the middle that is also during the day publicly accessible. We have the patio and then we have the entrance uh, on the north side and we have the main living room on the front side. And I will tell, I will go with you through the uh, through whole Jonas. So we start with the rock. Felix Landscape designers designed the, the outside space. We have a, an, a wooden tribune that's stepping down to the water side, has a, a playground for kids. Uh, at summertime, you can sit on the tribune and have a look uh, to the screen for uh, summer. Uh, in, the movie, in the summer, we can have a screen where uh, uh, movies are projected. And uh, also we, for the sustainability measures, for the biodiversity, we have even in the, uh, the brick, how do you call it, the, the K, um, we have a small uh, bird's nest for uh, different types of birds. Um, and also we have in the water, we have these rocks. These are uh, for, um, for fish, they can lay their eggs there, but also for mussels. Uh, to grow there. Uh, so there's also for the biodiversity we try to restore. We have an ecologist looking in the area. What is uh, possible here? What is the uh, original uh, flora and fauna? And how can we bring it back? So even in our buildings, I will show you later on more uh, on different spots we have. So it is very important also, what could you building uh, build back better for uh, biodiversity? The living, because for us, this is uh, without the furniture, without the people. For us, it's very important to have a very, on one hand, a very big space, but also very warm, a cozy space uh, where people could meet from the neighborhood, but also people that live in the building themselves. Um, the building is not sold to one party. It's a combination of uh, sales apartments, but it's also uh, rental apartments and the rental apartments went to the investor or so the investor Amvest and uh, we worked the we designed the building with uh, the developer also Amvest 
So Amves has a developing part and it has an investing part. So uh, with Amvest, we developed the project and afterwards Amvest Investment bought the, uh, the rental apartments and they also bought the, um, the living room. And there's even uh, also a function of a cafe. So if, if it doesn't work, the living room, they also can transform it back to a uh, restaurant or in a cafe. And this is with the furniture looking back to the, uh, to the main square. The four windows can go up uh, completely up, so the whole plinth open up to the square. If you go further into the building, so the, the inner street, if it works, if it works, yeah. Uh, so the main gallery through the building that's during the day publicly accessible is uh, completely made of wooden uh, lamellas. Around it, we have the galleries for the, for the rental apartments and the sales apartments. Uh, you can see here. And they're not with the straight lines. So they're meandering a little bit. So the, also the canyon feels, therefore, a little bit like a natural cave. Um, and uh, you can show later on. But it's it's a, a roof light. And over the roof light, there's streaming water, even. If you go further, on the canyon, you end up in the patio. So we have different kind of uh, spaces. So we could also extend the, the canyon, uh, but we want to have uh, different kind of spaces. So we have the green, uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, after the second day we planted the tree, but now we already have green in the patio. And there are also different types of birds uh, as a biodiversity uh, put on different spots in the wooden uh, facade. We tapped up the building a little bit, so we have to, from the past you can step down to the water. And this is exactly the west point where the sun is going down in the summer. And that's a very important one from the living room. You can go with a mountain path completely up to the roof terrace. Uh, even if you live on the second floor, you just take the mountain path or you go down or you go up. And here you see the mountain path with the roof light with the streaming water. And when you go up, you end up in the uh, the rooftop uh, beach with also a uh, rooftop bar uh, next to it. So we have a more or less semi-public uh, uh, area with uh, private gardens of the duplex houses. And here you can see the, the water streaming. Kids in the summertime play with it. So it's very nice when you walk uh, on the gallery, you see up, up on, the, on the ceiling, you see the kids uh, on the glass roof. So there's a total building. I explained to you also with the sales and the rental apartments, they are mixed through the building. And we have the collective functions. There are different collective functions, the living room, but we also have a cinema in it. We have uh, also visitor rooms for the guests. We have a workroom, yoga room, and a rooftop bar. This is ink facade with a wooden facade behind it. So also in the material that we have concrete with 30% uh, recycled concrete. We have a wooden facade with a zinc on the outside. So there's a lot of wood also in the facade, not visible. And when you zoom in, the storytelling goes totally into the detail because the rib structure in the zinc is sometimes pushed with an eye and you see a little fish in it. Uh, back again, also very important, sustainability report. And with this project, uh, we won or we, we achieved the BREEAM outstanding. It's the highest value on, uh, on uh, sustainability for the BREEAM uh, label. Uh, we did it, of course, with the whole team. It was a push by the municipality. It was an, also a an, uh, striving for Amvest. Uh, and they got it in their portfolio with the Article 9, with a very high, very high rating on their investment. So that's my story. Thank you, Patrick. Fascinating, I would say. Um, <clears throat> perhaps we have questions, but I also know, and it's an insider information, that uh, the chief architect of Lviv, who is the next speaker, will have to run at 5.35. So uh, shall we then give him the floor and then make a Q&A afterwards? Yeah? Let's do that. <clears throat> 